Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining our latest Kentico technical webinar on bridging the gap between Kentico and Marketo. My name is Brian Soltis. I'm the technical evangelist here at Kentico and uh, the usual host for these webinars. And uh, today, I think we have a, a really good topic that I'm kind of personally excited to deep dive into. Um, a lot of companies are using third party systems for, for their marketing needs, whether those are email campaigns or lead scoring or, or lots of other kind of functions that businesses need to track their users and understand the behaviors. And Marketo is certainly a, a very popular one and, and used widely throughout the industry. And uh, in this technical webinar, one of our gold partners, BizStream, has created a connector between Kentico and Marketo. And uh, what that's going to allow you to do is to share data between these two systems and, and really simplify your life in a lot of ways. So I'm really excited to see what uh, Brian McKeever, who's also one of our MVPs, is going to show us. Uh, before we get going into the actual webinar, I'm going to go through a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, if this is your first time using GoToWebinar, or if you just forgot from previous times, uh, everyone is in listen-only mode. There is a questions interface inside the GoToWebinar kind of utility. You can use that interface to ask questions throughout the presentation. If it's something that I know the answer to, I'll be glad to answer that on the fly. Otherwise, Brian's going to save some time at the end of the presentation to, to kind of cover any topics that come up while he's uh, going through his slides. And uh, the webinar is being recorded, and we'll post it to our YouTube channel after today. So if you, if you have to cut it short or if you just really like listening to us talk, uh, you can check out our YouTube channel and, and see the webinar there after today. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and get to the uh, the meat of it, and I'm going to hand it, things over to Brian. So Brian, welcome, and uh, please take over. Thank you very much, Brian. Um, thank you all for uh, attending today. And, and like Brian said, we're going to hopefully cover how we can cover the gap between uh, Kentico and Marketo. Uh, so I will just uh, minimize go to webinar here and get started. One of the first things I'd like to say is a big thank you to Kentico. Uh, they are a huge part of this equation as well. The technology partnership program allows uh, us to work, you know, really deeply with Kentco uh, from a technical standpoint and a business standpoint to understand how to bring more value to the Kentco platform and hopefully provide value to the end users of, of the system as well. So we've been a part of the technology partnership for a few years now, have a couple of products in it and are very happy with the results. So just wanna say thank you to Kentco for all their help and support to get us this far especially when it comes to supporting version 11 and, and other versions and things like that. So thank you very much, Kentico. And if, if you're out there and you're listening and you want to create your own mo modules or add-ins for the Kentico Technology Partnership, uh, feel free to hit the link below. It's on the Kentico site. You know, there's other great modules out there like e-commerce for Kentico, Serum Connect, um, and a few other payment gateways and a few other things. So, um, and uh, just quick note, Peter Bozak is the lead of the Kentico Technology Partnership. He's on the webinar today. And if you have questions about that, you can ask him at the end as well. So thank you, Kentico. Okay, why are we here? Well, I, like I kind of mentioned, uh, the goals for this webinar are to, to understand how we can bring more value to Kentico uh, in terms of specifically connecting Kentico and Marketo. There's a couple different major scenarios and use cases that our connector covers, um, but really the root of, of the reason is We've built many sites at BizStream when it comes to uh, Kentico marketing sites that are intended to generate leads and understand how to deal with contacts and use Kentico EMS to its fullest to deliver personalized content across all of the web properties that a business may have. And whenever we start to see a pattern of ourselves writing the same type of code over and over and over, we start to get this idea of, you know, there's got to be a better way. Uh, I can't tell you how many times we've actually written pieces of functionality in one Kentico site or another, and all they do is take data from one place and push it to another system. So really, our idea for this module kind of came in, in the fact that we've done it many times with different systems and we get tired of rewriting the same thing over and over. So our goal was to, to fix that and hopefully save us some time um, and you know make it a little bit more efficient to do it. Uh, and any time that we provide a module or extension on top of Kentico, we want to try to do it truly as seamlessly as possible. So our goal is to make it so that you can include a module without any other third-party systems, bring value to, to your Kentico instance uh, with a few clicks of a button, hopefully, and add in these connectors. So that's one of our other goals is to make it easy for people to try. And if they're not happy with it, actually to take it out. Um, and we've got some cool things that we've added to the system for that as well. So, and then truly, of course, we're going to walk through how we actually 
see data, move from a Canto website to Marketo. That's a bullet point I should have put on here, which is kind of funny, I didn't. But that's the goals of, of what we're trying to do today. And without further notice, really, uh, we'd like to take this opportunity to introduce our Connect for Kentico module. This is part of our toolkit for Kentico suite of tools that, that make working with Kentico easier. Um, the main goal of the Connect module is to easily integrate Connect or Kentico forms to Marketo, Zoho, and Dynamics 365. So, you know, we've got these three or four pieces of functionality that work with these three CRMs. In the future, we may add other CRMs to it because it's set up to be a repeatable process. But really today, we're gonna focus just on Marketo. So uh, everything I'm gonna show you is allowed to happen in the other CRMs that are on the slide here. But, you know, if you have specific questions about Zoho Dynamics, feel free to reach out to me afterwards or in the questions that we can cover it then. Or check out our website at bitstreamtoolkit.com that has all the full details as well. Um, so what does Connect for Kentico do for Marketo? And that can really be broken out into three groups of functionality. The primary use case is lead form integration or online forms integration with Kentico. The idea here is that Kentico EMS has this great set of functionality for uh, marketers to build forms that collect information about users, uh, website visitors, or registered users. And it's easy to set up, right? You can drag and drop these forms. You can save the data to Kentico. You can have email notifications about when these forms get filled out. And that's all great, but let's take it one more step further and then instead of having to manually type in that information to a CRM or look at an email and then remember to later on put it into a CRM, let's just tie these things together. So we provide with Connect for Kentico the ability to basically connect uh, the Marketo lead generation system to Kentico online forms. So that way you can design the form in Kentico, add first name, last name, company, all that kind of good stuff, and then with a few extra configuration steps, say I want this data to show up as leads in Marketo. So that's the primary use case. We're going to walk through all that in a demo a little bit later. Uh, the second uh, use case is actually to enable content personalization. So once we have leads inside of Marketo's information where we can set up custom fields or use the standard attributes of, you know, my name, my company, maybe annual revenue about the company, maybe the location of where the company is or the person is, we can then bring that information back into our Kentico uh, instance and set up personalization variants use macros as if that data was actually in Kentico itself. So we try to make that as seamless as possible. We're gonna show you how you can do that as well. And then thirdly, we're gonna show you how you can use the Marketo functionality for our activity tracking to take website activity, you know, page views, downloads and things like that, and actually get that into the Marketo solution as well, and then link up that activity with the lead in Marketo. So those are the three main things that we're gonna to try to provide with this connector. And uh, I'm gonna show you all those things today. But to step a little bit deeper in each one, uh, I have basically a quick uh, set of information to just kind of explain the fact that this is truly meant to be kind of part of Kentco. So uh, the screenshot shows that this is uh, actually my blog. Uh, we're running uh, the Connect for Kentco extension there. And basically, through a set of configuration that looks a little bit like Kentico, a little custom, we're able to map fields that can push data uh, to different entities. Um, one kind of side note here, our tool allows contacts, leads, accounts, or custom entities in the different CRMs if their APIs support it. So we're using the Marketo REST-based API, it technically only supports leads as its entry point. So for Marketo, this list really is just leads. But for our other platforms like Zoho and Dynamics, you can do contacts, accounts, and other, other things. So a um, little bit of a detail there. But really, the idea is that we want you to be able to do this inside of the Kentico instance on the online form interface to not have to jump out to something else to worry about it. And I'm going to show you exactly how to map those fields to begin with. But basically, you can see this is just adding into the configuration of how you manage online forms in Kentico, right? This would be the same place that you have recorded data for all the information that gets submitted and tracked in the Kentico database. That's where you would manage your notifications. And now it's where you manage your connections to the third party systems like Marketo. And I'll show you more of that later. The second group of functionality, um, 
is the activity tracking setup. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Marketo provides activity tracking through what they call the Munchkin JavaScript tracking code. And it's a hard thing to say, but really, basically, you can think of it just like Google Analytics, right? You get a snippet of JavaScript, you put it on every page, and it does its magic to line up when a visitor views a page and then traverses through the site. That same visitor gets a unique cookie, and it brings it together and puts it in the Marketo interface. So because Marketo already has this functionality, and most people who are using Marketo probably are used to having this on their websites, we decided not to use Kentucky EMS activity tracking. That's kind of one key differentiator about our plugin is that we're really leveraging more of the Marketo activity tracking when it comes to Marketo. Uh, but we made this very easy to handle as long as you can give us the right Munchkin account ID, which is the first sort of variables there on the top right part of the screen. Uh, we dynamically inject that into the site. So instead of having to worry about editing the master page or do I need a web part or how do I do all this configuration, we dynamically add an output filter to your site if you have this value filled in and it just magically works. And I will show you that as well. And lastly, we talked about content personalization. Uh, you can see I have a little preview here. This is a set of some of the macros we've developed to work with Marketo and some of the other CRMs I've mentioned. Basically, the scope of this feature is that once we have everything linked up together correctly, we can use the identifier of the person who's viewing the site to call back into Marketo to get any kind of attribute about them. So as long as that attribute is defined on the specific lead, like first name, last name, zip code, website, job title, whatever it is, we can grab that through Kemsco's standard macro system because we built pre-built some custom macros, or we can actually work off segmentation lists that Marketo provides. And their API allows us to talk to static lists. So if you're somewhat familiar with Marketo, you could define a Marketo program, you can do lead scoring, you can do flows, uh, however you want to get people into lists, that's the power of Marketo. You would leverage all that to build your list. And then we can reach out and say, oh, is this person who's viewing the page in this list and use that as a way to define personalization. Um, I know there's other options in Marketo, things like smart lists and that. Uh, unfortunately, the Marketo API doesn't expose those yet. Uh, their development community says it's coming soon, and if, if they finally add that to the uh, REST-based API, we will add that to our tool. But for right now, those are the two primary things that Marketo allows us to work with very easily. So we've brought those into Kent's code to allow for different content personalization scenarios. And I will show you one of those as well. And at this point, I'm really hoping that you saw those three pieces of functionality. You're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing, right? The crowd goes wild as if you were a Vikings fan on January 14th when they won against the Saints. Sorry, I couldn't help but bring a football example into this because honestly, when they showed the crowd going nuts and I was going nuts and I'm a football fan and I'm hoping you have the same reaction when you have Marketo functionality with Kentico in mind. What I'm hoping that you don't have is the very next week, unfortunately, those same Vikings fans uh, were not so happy. And frankly, the guy's face on the left and the lower screen there is kind of how I felt and almost every Everybody back at the office felt as well that couldn't believe that the Vikings got blown out. Um, sorry, I'm a big football fan. Vikings are from the same division as the NFC North as the Lions, and uh, I was rooting for them hardcore, but uh, they let me down, and now we have to deal with the Patriots one more time and the Eagles. Couldn't help it. Couldn't resist. Uh, so with all that being said, why don't we take a look at the actual functionality? So I'm going to jump out of PowerPoint. And I have an instance of Kentico 11 running here locally on my machine that we're gonna look at today with my super secret password. I'm gonna refresh it just to make sure it's alive, all that kind of good stuff. And uh, I have pre-configured our connect module. I've installed it in Kentico 11 already using um, the installation process that we have for toolkit modules. I'm gonna skip that part of the demo for now. We have that fully documented on our website at bistreamtoolkit.com. It's very easy to do. We have YouTube videos. It's a standard 
Kentco module import the very first time to get toolkit in there. And after that, you'll get um, the Connect uh, extension available to you. So at the end, I might show that if we have a little time left over, but for right now, I just wanna focus purely on the Marketo ability. So once you have uh, the Connect module installed with Kentco, you can click that from your dashboard, or of course you can get to it from uh, from the menu. We've rebranded it just to Toolkit. So if I click Connect, I'm gonna get this the same, same place, same thing. And we have this idea of connectors. This idea really is born to support the fact that you may have a website that needs to integrate with more than one thing. So for instance, this uh, this example site, which is a Dancing Goat starter site, actually has the Marketo connector installed as well as another connector configuration for the Zoho sandboxes that we use in the production site that we use. Uh, but uh, for right now, I'm actually gonna show you what the process is to start the configuration of building a connector. So I'm gonna click new connector. I'm gonna say it's my Marketo webinar test. And I'm gonna choose Marketo as my connector type. I'm gonna leave the code name as automatic. I'm gonna click save. Once we do that, we have uh, some instructions because again, if you're kind of maybe not necessarily a pure developer or used to working with Marketo, there are different configuration keys that you need to go get. This tries to make it very clear and very easy to understand, all right, here are the exact things we need. Here's where to go to get them in the Marketo interface. So that's what the setup instructions give us. And instead of actually navigating all through those screens, I uh, tried to make a little bit of a shortcut here and have some of our information ready in my notepad file. This is our Marketo Sandbox Munchkin ID. That's basically your account. ID with Marketo. And if you're familiar, you should understand that. And then we have a couple other keys that we need. Again, you find these in the admin or the uh, integration section with the Marketo product. I'm gonna paste in our client ID and I'm gonna paste in our client secret and I'm gonna click save. And what that did when I click save is it went out, hit the API with Marketo authenticated an access token that said who is who we are in the Marketo system, brought that back and put that into Kentico for us. And now that that worked, the choice is giving us basically which entity do we want to integrate with and with Marketo again, because their API only supports leads. I'm gonna click leads. I'm gonna click save one more time. So that is the setup process to get the connector working inside of your Kentico application. Uh, you can See, we have one new connector now set up with the webinar test. There is one other optional step when it comes to setup that you don't have to do this, but if you want to support activity tracking, we have a custom setting that you need to add in one small set of JavaScript, like I said, to get that Munchkin, Munchkin activity tracking code going. And that is in the connect area on the Marketo sub key. Again, this is uh, the spot that here's where, if you want to use activity tracking, where we need to get it in. And to make it really simple to figure out what this is, we add a link to the Marketo documentation. This goes right to the right spot. Oh, geez, hit my microphone, that's not good. Uh, right to the right spot that um, tells you where to go get it. Again, I already have that kind of set up. And I'm gonna paste that, or copy and paste that into the settings because we do want to enable Marketo activity tracking. And the reason this is a text area is that you can do other special things with the tracking code. It doesn't have to be as simple as this one line. There are ways to do more things, understand campaigns and different different configurations. So we didn't want to restrict it to just one thing. That's why there's a text area. You can put the entire JavaScript snippet if you want in there, but this is the minimum requirement to get the tracking code going. And again, this is still optional, but because we added uh, a setting that the site may not know about, just to make sure everything works, I'm gonna clear the cache and restart the app. Uh, what this really is doing is kind of setting up the fact that we have a new output filter that we need to get on the output of the site. Um, again, it's if you only wanna use lead form submission, you don't need to do this process. We have this documented on our website at bistrandtoolkit.com. And really, uh, once that restarts, that's all it takes to set up the integration. Once the integration pipeline is set up, then it's all about the forms. So we're gonna walk through uh, the scenario, the first scenario. And 
I am going to choose the uh, try a free sample form that the Dancing Goat website has. And just to make sure you guys can see it, I, you, I'm sure if you're listening to this webinar, you've probably seen the Dancing Goat starter site, but I'll, I'll quick show that just to show you the forms. So you can visualize what we're going to do here. Um, this is the homepage of the Dancing Goat, and on the Dancing Goat site, there's a nice little uh, landing page that's set up with a campaign to try to grab leads. So we have the Columbia landing page, and it's got some nice information. At the bottom of this, the page, we have a form. First name, last name, all just standard stuff, and the idea here is that if you give us your information, we're going to send you a free sample of coffee with this website, right? So that's the form we're manipulating in the admin interface. And if you are an astute Kensco user, you'll notice that there is one new tab now registered in the system. This is where our connector starts to play until I do that configuration. I'm going to click connectors. And you can see I was working on a little test this morning to make sure everything was still good. But the next step of setting up the lead form submission is to define a connector process. So I'm going to click new. And it basically says, what data do you want to send over? In our Connect product, we have two options. The most common option, the one you'll probably use 99% of the time, is the form data option. This will take the form data that's submitted to this form and push it to Marketo. We have a second option, which is all about the um, EMS activity data being pushed to a CRM. That really is available for Zoho and Dynamics. It's not available for Marketo, so I'm going to ignore it for now. Once I choose the form data I want to send over, it says, which connector do you want to send it to? And I'm actually going to choose the webinar test connector that we set up a second ago. And the third choice is where do you want to send the entity information to? I'm going to check leads. And I am going to uh, click enabled and click save just to make sure all that worked just fine. And as you can see, um, now that we've chosen where we want to push the form data to, we have a whole set of field mappings that opened up to us. And what we did is we dynamically reached out to the Marketo API looked at the lead entity and figured out what fields that you have in your Marketo leads set up, all these attributes. The ones that are not grayed out are the ones we auto mapped for you because we figured out that, guess what? If Kentico calls the field first name and the Marketo API has the same exact field of first name, that's probably where you want it to be mapped to. This is just a default. You can override and change this, but we try to intelligently guess at this mapping and figure it out for you. And you can see we did a pretty good job. We've got a lot of these fields automatically mapped. The ones in gray are the ones that weren't automatically mapped. And really, the, the list is defined by what fields are in Marketo. And as you can see, there are quite a few fields that are defined in the Marketo lead entity. Um, you don't have to use all of them. Really, the only ones that are absolutely required are the ones in red. So this is telling me that I should fix this because it's in red. And the one required field for Marketo to add a lead is the program name. And because we don't want to have to have the users enter the program name, we've added this ability in our product to say use a static value. And I simply have to match the program name in Marketo, which is that top level entity of how Marketo is set up. Type that name in here and click Save. So that now is a static value that will get sent over with the, the API call to, to bridge the gap between the two systems. So I've got this stream set up as the program. I have the information from the form, most of the fields going over. And um, there's one more kind of optional slash special step, which you can do if you want to. And that is if you want to line up the activity tracking, you need to bring in the cookie value. Um, and here's again, a, a place where we try to make it somewhat easy. We have a, a custom macro setup that allows you to bring the cookie value of who submits the form, which lines it up in Marketo. Uh, I'm going to put that in the cookie field because uh, that's the way they want you to do it. And there it is. I'm going to again say use static value, but instead of just typing something in, this time I am going to add a Kentico macro and I'm going to save that as well. So now we have the program, the field names, and the cookies of how this all sets up together, and that is all it takes. So let's see if it works. Uh, oh, but you know what? I'm going to do one step just to triple check because I was testing this out earlier this morning, 
and I don't want it to show up twice. I actually want to show up once. So I'm going to disable my test from this morning. Make sure that that is set to no. That's cool. All right, so we've got one connector process ready to go. And I'm going to do it in a different browser. And again, there's my, my football fandom coming into play here. And I'm going to go to that same landing page in a different browser because I don't want it to pick up the global admin account. I want it to actually be someone else. Uh, I'm going to go down the page. And I'm going to fill this in uh, as a test user. And I work at BizStream. And I'm going to do Audrey at BizStream.com. Address, city, state, zip. Uh, country, standard stuff, and I'm going to submit that form. So what this is going to do is all the standard Kentico stuff. We didn't override any of that. It's going to submit the Kentico form to the Kentico database. The email notifications and autoresponders will still go out, but we made one extra special hook that after all that happens, we want to push that to Marketo. And just to make sure, uh, we do deliver some debugging information. I'm going to check the event log out to see what Kentico thinks happened. And uh, sure enough, right here, here is uh, an event log entry that says, hey, you successfully pushed this to Marketo. That, that's useful just from a making sure it works standpoint. You actually don't need to look at it unless there's an error if you want to. But uh, probably more interesting, what does that look like in Marketo? So we're going to switch gears a little bit. And if you're not familiar with Marketo, this is the Marketo admin interface. We have a sandbox account set up, and uh, we have one of those programs defined. So if you remember, when I was setting up the mapping, I defined a program that had to match the name. So if I click BizStream, that gets me to my you know, members or who are part, who are part of this list, uh, all the campaigns I have set up, nurtures, you know, email marketing, marketing automation, all that kind of good stuff is defined underneath the program Marketo. And that's where the, that BizStream name came from. I'm going to click Members. And then I'm going to sort the list based off the maybe most recent member that was added. And sure enough, there is Audrey. That's the one I just typed in. And if I click the details of Audrey, all that information that was collected on the Kensco form is now automatically showing up in Marketo, as we would expect. So I've got first name, last name, I've got email, I've got the address, all that kind of good stuff, right? And if I go to the activity log, which is how you look at activity in Marketo, we're going to see a couple things. We're going to see that um, not only was the person added to the to the the lead was added to the the campaign or the, the program, we actually have a, a web page view, and that kind of also proves that that Marketo Munchkin tracking code is happening on the outside of the site. So now that we know who this person is, right? I know Audrey was the one who was submitting that lead form. Maybe Audrey wanted to go start looking at uh, the contact page to, to learn more, to see where the offices were for the answer to the site. Maybe she wanted to go look at the home page. And what was happening is every one of these page views now has that, that same cookie to identify who we are, and that has already been pushed into the Marketo system. So if you wait a second or two and you refresh the page, you're going to see that that activity is going to start showing up because we now know who this person is. So we clicked the link, we viewed a web page, we went from contact to home, all that stuff is starting to come in and track because we now know who this person is, right? So it's pretty cool. And this is the type of stuff that you would then use in the Marketo system to do more segmentation, more nurturing of the lead, more marketing automation, right? All standard Marketo stuff. Okay, so that, that's kind of two out of three scenarios, right? We talked about lead form submission, we talked about activity tracking, but now what if we wanted to respond back to information we have in Marketo on our Kentico website? What well, if we want to personalize that experience? So I have a little scenario set up for that as well. And I'm back in Chrome, so I'm back in my admin interface or my admin login. And uh, just a quick refresher, if you're not familiar with it, the cafes section of the Dancing Goat are all the different cafes that, uh, that the Dancing Goat company has available to them. We have a couple around the world. Uh, we've got you know Amsterdam, Boston, Melbourne, Birmingham, Los Angeles, and we happen to have this one in Allendale, Michigan, right? So this is one of the cafes that the Dancing Goat company works off of. So if I know Audrey is browsing the website from 
Michigan, maybe she's interested in seeing that Allendale Cafe first, and maybe not the one in Amsterdam. Although Amsterdam is a pretty cool place, I hear. Maybe she should be more interested than that, because Allendale, frankly, is a set of cornfields, and it's not that exciting. Um, but honestly, here's an example of where we can maybe personalize the experience based off what we know about the person in Marketo. So instead of having just this list of cafes, uh, what I'm going to show you is how to use that information to, again, personalize this page. And to do that, I'm going to go back into Kentco, and I'm going to start modifying uh, some web part variants. Again, this is kind of using the standard personalization engine that Kentco EMS provides. And I'm going to navigate to the cafes area. And just to show you the setup, we have the cafes page, uh, which has the different cafes based off location. There's some in Europe, there's some in North America, that's what we talked about. And I'm going to go to the design tab. And here we have our standard stuff, right? We've got a Kentco zone, um, template, web parts, all that kind of good stuff. And our cafes web part is set to just show me every cafe that's in these areas. Doesn't, it doesn't necessarily care where, it's just set up to show all of them. Let me make this a little bit bigger. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add a personalization variant. And the cool thing about the Kentico system is that any information that Kentico knows about the visitor, as long as you have EMS activity tracking and contact management turned on, we can use to personalize these, these pages. So I'm gonna actually say, uh, from Michigan Cafe's webinar, just I think I did this once before, as the name of the variant, and then I'm gonna add a condition. But instead of adding the condition that normally would happen, you know, normally we'd be able to use these uh, macro condition rules that talk about Kentco information to, to bring the personalization to life. I'm going to actually use some of the ones that we've um, built in to uh, Marketo. So I'm going to try a live demo here. Hopefully the demo guys are ha happy with me. I'm going to use my uh, namespace for my macro that I have. I am going to say I want a string value, and I'm going to say state, because I want to get the state that the lead is registered in or that we know about. And I'm going to say if that is equal, eh, you know what, I'm actually going to do two lower, just to make sure I don't have any string issues. If that is equal to Michigan. And that's how I want this, this personalization variant to work. And I'm going to say save and close. So that defined my display condition for the personalization variant. This is all standard Kentico stuff. If you've never done this, I would encourage you to check out the documentation or DevNet, there's some good examples there. The only difference is we have a custom macro that our product provides on top of Kentico. So best practice states that we should make this short. I'm gonna make the M cafes, Michigan cafes repeater. And down here in the where clause, I'm a little too fast. I'm actually going to say where cafe country is like Michigan. Uh, because again, this is the field that we've defined the Allendale Cafe as having the uh, country of US and the state of Michigan. That tells us where the Allendale Cafe is. So I'm going to click save and close because that's all I need to do to define this variant. Now you can see we have the two variants set up. We have the Michigan Cafe's repeater and then we have the standard one. And I'm gonna go back to the browser that has Audrey in it. I'm gonna refresh it, make sure everything's cool. And then I'm gonna go to cafes. So now you can see that the web page beha behaves accordingly because it knows that I'm looking at this as Audrey. It knows Audrey is from Michigan. And I've basically set up the page personalization say, if I know you're from Michigan, only show the Michigan cafe in the list below. I didn't change the map. You know, it doesn't, it'd be the same exact process. It's not that big of a deal, but you can see that as I'm viewing it, and because we know that information from Marketo about Audrey, this is the Allendale Cafe page. And then just to, you know, prove that I'm not crazy, I'm gonna go refresh it uh, in the regular, uh, the Chrome browser where I don't know anything about the global admin in Marketo, and we still have all of the other cafes showing up, right? So that is how we use the Marketo information to personalize content in Kentico. And basically, you can do it anywhere that those rule engine um, and uh, condition editors are in your Kentico site. You can do it in page templates with web part variants, which is what I just showed. You can do it in default values of a form. So if you wanted to, instead of, um, you know, if someone was logged in or we knew who they were, and even if they weren't logged in, and you went to the Contact Us page, 
if you want to maybe not have them fill in their name because we know who their name is, you could set that as a default value in there. That will work just as fine. Really, it's the full support of what Kensco EMS can do. Basically, just using information that we know about the person in Marketo. And you can see it was pretty easy, right? We didn't have to do a ton of extra setup. So that was our demo. Now to resume the PowerPoints. Oh, that was the wrong button. Never fails. Let me see if I can get to the right spot here. I'm hoping again that the crowd is going wild at this point. Okay, so those are the three main scenarios of, of how we've handled our Marketo integration with Kentico. Where do you go to get it is what I've got on the screen here. Uh, our website is updated at bizstreamtoolkit.com slash downloads. You can go get this uh, connector, uh, which is part of the toolkit for Kentico for basically every version of Kentico since version 8.2. Uh, the, the how you get it is to download it, import the toolkit for Kentico module via Kentico standard import process to get the module in there first. And then when that module is in there, you would actually click uh, install the Kentico, the Connect for Kentico extension right from your site, and you would have it. Uh, and again, that that just, it's a very simple process. It looks like this. Uh, we made it very easy, or at least we tried to make it very easy, that if you get the toolkit module installed, this new interface comes up and you can simply click, uh, the Connect one would show up at the bottom here, you connect install, it would refresh the page, it put all the code in there, and you'd be off and running. So that's all it takes. Uh, so that should make sense. It should be somewhat easy. If you have any questions, of course, please reach out to us at support at BizStream and we'll help you through that process free of charge. Oh, it looks like I had a, a slide that had that. So yeah, this is the uh, this is basically what it looks like with the extensions installed. Uh, a note, there's a couple other extensions you can grab from the same process as well. So uh, now that you know what it does and how to get it, uh, there is a price on this one. Um, our Connect for Kentico module we're giving a 90-day free trial to get started. And again, that will work with Marketo, Zoho, and Dynamics 365. Uh, the first year price is $100 per year per production site. So you can have as many forms as you want, but per top level production site, it's $99 per year for the first year. And then after that, um, it, you know, the introductory offer kind of goes away and it would be $500 a year uh, going forward. Um, as part of that, the toolkit for Kensco is required. That's like the base of the, of the solution. That part's always free. Um, you can install and get that. And there's some free tools like Search for Kentico and Site Improve for Kentico that are included with that. And then, of course, Compare for Kentico is a, um, a paid tool. But there's a trial available for that one, too. That helps make deployments easier uh, with the process. So we're trying to build more and more extensions on top of our toolkit for Kentico Suite to, again, make working with Kentico easier. But at the end of the day, if you don't want to take my word from it uh, for it, uh, we do have a few paying customers with the product already. This is a quote from um, one of our customers at taxauto.com. And you know, I'm not gonna read the slide to you, but basically when we first brought this product to them, they were expecting kind of a long process to understand, oh, how do we integrate Zoho with Kentico? How hard is this? Is it gonna take a while? How long is it gonna take? And I basically said, you know what? This is gonna take about two hours. And the guy laughed at me. He literally laughed at me on the phone. But Ted's a great guy, you know, he's, he understands my humor. Um, and I said, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll bet on it. Uh, and I did, and sure enough, within a few hours, their team was able to get this up and running and they couldn't believe it, how easy it was. And they're very happy that they used the tool. So our paying customers like it so far. And with that, I'm kind of at the end of what I had prepared. I'm hoping there's a few questions. Um, I mean, Brian, if you want to take over at this point and maybe ask away. Sure thing, fantastic presentation, Brian. I know people really enjoyed it because they asked a lot of questions. So get ready, here we go. Uh, okay. First question is, and I believe this is dealing with the macros that pull the data from the static list. It's, uh, does this work on any field in uh, in a person's record in a Marketo, including custom fields? I think they were referring to when you were talking about um, using the K-sharp engine and the macros to pull, like, we get whatever value. Yes, actually it does. We've tested it with custom fields. The key there is the Marketo API gives you a describe lead call. And that's the thing we're using to understand all of the fields about a Marketo lead. So as long as it shows up in that API, I call our case sharp macro will work with that. And we have tested that scenario actually, because that was one of our questions as well. Cool. Uh, next question is, will this connector work with Marketo progressive profiling? So like I said, um, this kind of comes down to what the Marketo API allows us to do. We wish it could do more. 
but right now literally it works with leads and static lists only um, Marketo has promised that they will keep updating and adding more things into the possibilities uh, with their API they have an older school version of one that isn't rest based and isn't as nice to work with that unfortunately we, we couldn't get to work so really the only functionality it works for is leads and people in static lists. Okay, uh, next question is a little bit more complex. It's uh, on the cookie macro to pass the activity data into Marketo. Is that the same information that's being sent by the Munchkin code by default, or is it is there other information that's collected by Kentico in that post? That's a great question. Uh, actually, it's only the information collected by default by Marketo, and we're really just passing the Munchkin identifier of the person. Um, you could configure it to do more, and that's where the the settings come into play. So you could add more things in there, and you could bring other cookie fields over, because that cookie uh, macro syntax is the pure Kentico macro. And if you want to do more than just Munchkin ID uh, um, or, or other fields that you've set up to track, you could push those over, but by default, um, the tool doesn't. But again, if you have... Uh, needs and, and there's issues and you want us to help out a little bit to understand it, we're happy to have that conversation. Cool. Uh, next question, I think you've actually already addressed this, but I'll, I'll say the question anyway, is does the connector allow for syncing the contacts of Marketo with contacts in Kentico? And you said that the Marketo only handles leads, so I, I doubt that it, that's possible, but I'll let you kind of talk about it a little bit more. Yeah, unfortunately it doesn't uh, right now. Um, we decided that for our first release of the product that lead submission is really the main thing that people want that are they're happening over and over and over there was quite a bit of discussion about could we synchronize contacts and um, basically in our in our scope it was defined that 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 was a nice to have so in the future it may be possible again it is a little bit more has to be done on the on the marketo side um, as well but right now it can't um, and if you're super interested about in that you know, I would say reach out to us and, and you know, we see what we can do. But um, for, yeah, for right now, again, it's the same answer of leads and stack lists. Okay, and does the connector support two-way syncing? Um, so really it's, again, it's, it's one-way directional of online forms to Marketo. And then the only direction back is personalization support of what we know in Marketo about the lead. You can personalize through those macros. So in a theory, it's two-way. Way, but it's not a two-way sync of leads by any means. It does not show up in the Kentco contacts at all. Uh, we haven't seen a huge business need for that either yet. Okay, and uh, actually on the personalization topic, uh, people really, really like that part of it. And uh, the question around that is, can you only work off the lead object to personalize or can you access activities within Marketo as well? So right now, um, we only have lead objects set up in those macros. Uh, we have uh, discussions around supporting that in the next build of the Connect for Kentico because we know that that would be a very cool thing to do. And that is technically easier than the last question. So that could be the very next feature. Um, if you're interested in that, again, I would say please reach out to us so we could have um, some discussions about what exactly you need and we might be building that in fairly quickly. Okay, and uh, speaking of those updates, Brian, when someone, uh, when someone purchases the connector and they use it within their site, as you release these updates, do they get those for free and are they able to, how's that upgrade process when you do release a new version? Is there something you could talk to about that? Yeah, um, that's one of the things that we spent a lot of time in 2017 to making all of our products a little bit easier to deal with. And this is super dangerous, super off the hip, totally unprepared, but um, I'm gonna do it anyways, cause you know, what the hell, uh, it's just software. My blog uh, has a version of the toolkit running that was, pr it's probably about a week old. And we pushed out a new build recently. So this is really the process of updating. Um, and and um, this is literally my production website. Um, for, for everyone watching, Brian is either very brave or very stupid right now. So we'll yeah, very brave, very stupid. And I'm, if this goes wrong, I'm totally gonna blame Mark Schmidt. If you guys know, this is my business partner. This is his <laughs> thing, right? So I have a safety blanket there. But you can see that the toolkit is saying that I'm running the 63 version of the products. We pushed out the 64 version. There's a new version of Connect. So 
this is the process because we do release frequently and the, basically we've put a lot of time into this. So I'm gonna click update and it's gonna say, hey, you're about to update this on your website. And it's gonna call home to our service, bring in a package, run an import step for you with basically one click. Um, there's an optional setting here if you need rights, because this is production and we don't have write privilege normally. Um, there's This is kind of a little bit of a technical thing. And again, this may or may not work. Totally dangerous. Uh, make sure I have this right. And as soon as I do this, I'm gonna click install now. It's gonna say, hey, are you sure you wanna do this because you're about to recompile your site? Because we're gonna add a new DLL. And of course it's gonna fail because I don't have the right password. <laughs> so, um, that's okay. I you think know, people. Uh, I think people understand the concept and yeah, how actually yeah. inside of the toolkit it tells you when there's updates available. And uh, actually, on the same topic of that toolkit and support, um, Bizstream actually offers dedicated support for all the all the aspects of the toolkit. Is that correct, including the Marketo one? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, so uh, our support is is dedicated as as we so commit to with the technology partnership with Kensco. Um, basically, if you have any issues, the place to start is support at bizstream.com. And our team is always watching that inbox. You'll get help from um, Mark, myself, or other developers at BizStream. We always offer you know, an hour or two of free support on top of that in terms of if you have issues setting up the tool, we have joined me or Skype, we can make a remote session happen. And um, you know, we're, we're very interested in getting people uh, up to speed quickly. We don't wanna waste a bunch of your time on the installation process. So I'm really mad at myself for not being able to remember what the password is at the moment, um, but I can fake it here, I think. So I'm gonna try this, because I'm gonna try to update connect even though it's already installed. It kind of lets me because I've already done it um, and I'm running localhost. So I'm gonna try this, because I think this is gonna work the same exact process. Because this is gonna update the module without having to type in a password, because I'm running localhost. And what's happening is, again, it's reaching out from our um, service, grabbing the, the zip file, installing it all through the Kentico API and, and kind of running that process. So once the install happens, which it just did, it updated the version, brought in the new things it needs to, which includes the files and the Kentico objects, and it's kind of restarting your site right now. And um, does, does that work for both websites and web, app, web application projects, Brian? It does, actually. We've um, committed to all of the files are in the DLL. So even though it's a web app, um, because that DLL gets dropped in automatically, everything still works for both websites and web apps. So and we actually have this really fancy screen. This is what I was. This is the thing I was trying to show. <laughs> um, <laughs> while you're waiting for your site to recompile, unlike standard Kentico, you just have this white spinning screen. We added a few nice slides to make you feel better about the process as it's recompiling. And that it, you can do web applications and websites because your module, the module you create, is actually a separate project. It's not underneath the Kentico project, correct? It's compiled into a separate DLL as its own project, and that's why you're able to drop that in. Correct. Yep. And and that's a Kentico best practice, right? If you're gonna add custom stuff as a as a custom module, the best thing to do is to make your own separate project and either show or follow the instructions that Kentico has, or make a NuGet package to install it. And that's actually one of our goals for 2018 is to add NuGet packages to this. But that was the upgrade process. The whole thing is upgraded at this point. Fantastic. And uh, if you could, Bar, why don't you bring up the uh, the where they can get more information and where they, the slide you had with the links. And uh, yep. when we finish up, just so that's kind of the last slide people see, because they want to get more information, they'll be able to find it very quickly. Um, with that, we actually have answered all the questions and then some. So I wanted to, to thank Brian and BizStream. And this is a fantastic connector, and this is really the – the level of integration that, that amazes us as a vendor that, that our partners are able to produce. And it brings so much functionality and allows companies to collaborate in between their different systems and their departments. And it, it saves people a lot of time. And that's really what you want out of software is you want to make people's lives easier. So with integrations and connectors like these that combine you know, Marketo data along with Kentico data in a single platform, you're really saving people a lot of headache and making their lives a lot easier. So I wanted to thank you very much for a fantastic uh, presentation. Brian has all the information up here. If you want to go check out the connector, you know where to go find it. And uh, Brian is an MVP, loves to talk to partners. So if you want to reach out to him, I'm sure he'll be glad to discuss this in more depth with you. Um, 
with that, we're going to wrap things up to remind everyone the webinar has been recorded and we will post it to our Kentico YouTube channel after today. If you're not familiar with that channel, just go to YouTube, type in Kentico, and you will see a ton of webinars, whether they're technical webinars, product webinars, how-to webinars, deep dives into technology or connectors in our technology partnership. There's a ton of information there, so it's a great way to kind of see what's new in the platform or if you really want to watch stuff about version 6, I think you can find that there too. So with that, I wanted to thank everyone for their time and for BizStream for making a fantastic uh, addition to our technology partnership program, and uh, we hope you have a great day. Thanks.